everyone. I'm going to demonstrate the Evolutionary Agents Lab, and the purpose of this lab is to evaluate mechanisms of evolution. So first we'll start with natural selection. So you can find this portion of the lab on table three, or I'm sorry, table one and table two on pages three and four of your lab manual. So we're going to start by establishing a background of small white beads. So we're going to pour these in this pan and spread them out a bit. Now our starting population is comprised of individuals of white beads. These are larger than the small white beads. So we have large white beads, large red beads, and large pink beads. So we're starting off with 10 large white beads, 10 large red beads, and 20 large pink beads. So right now, our alleles are at equilibrium. Because let's say our large white beads, these have two capital A alleles. Now our large red beads have two lowercase a alleles. And then these organisms exhibit incomplete dominance. Thus we have an intermediate phenotype, that's the pink bead, and these have a capital A and a lowercase a allele. Now these are individuals, so they all have two alleles. Now I'm going to dump our starting population in and mix them up with the small white beads. Now, I'm going to be a predator. So I am going to time myself for 30 seconds and prey upon as many beads as I possibly can within 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds is up. So, these are the preyed upon individuals. They're actually dead, so I'm going to set these off to the side. What we're going to do from here is lift the top portion of the tray. It is basically a sieve. So we're going to shake away all the small beads, and I'm going to collect the large beads. You lost a big white one. All right, bear with me. This is going to take a minute. This actually is the last lab of the semester. I hope you guys are excited about that. Woohoo! Although you still have to take your practical. And sometimes large beads slip through that sieve. So I'm just looking. Okay, it appears I have all the large beads. So now I'm going to show you how to do the calculations. First, we need to calculate our allele frequencies. Then we calculate genotypic frequencies, and then we start with um, a new population of 40. All right, sorry guys. Bear with me, I'm recording this myself. It's a little difficult to get everything set up. All right, that looks good. So now I'm going to count the number of white beads I have. Okay, I have seven.
Now I'll count the pink beads. There are 14 of those. And lastly, our red beads, which we have four of. Okay, so I am going to call capital A, P. And I'm going to call lowercase a, Q. Now, by definition, P plus Q equals one, because we only have these two alleles in our population. So we will be using um, Hardy-Weinberg to calculate our genotypic frequencies and allele frequencies, but first we will start with our allele frequencies. So let's start by calculating P. So P is going to equal two times our number of white beads, which is seven. Now we multiply two by seven because there is two capital alleles for each white individual. So we're counting up both alleles. Then we are going to add our number of pink beads, which is 14. And we're only adding 14. We're not multiplying this by two because the pink individuals only have one capital A allele. Then we're going to divide this by two times our total number of alleles in the population. Which is 25. Now we're multiplying 25 by two because every individual in this population has two alleles. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So what we get here for our P allele equals 0 0.56. This equals our P. I'm gonna make sure you can see this. Okay, you can, good. Now, using this equation, P plus Q equals one, if we simply subtract P from one, we get our Q. So, one minus 0 0.56 is going to equal 0 0.44 and then you would like to ideally check your math so if we have 0.56 and 0.44 we want to make sure that equals one and it does so we calculated our allele frequencies now we want to calculate our genotypic frequencies so our next equation that we will be using is p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. All right, so we know what our p is. I'm going to erase these equations to give us a little bit more room. All right, so P equals 0 0.56 squared. So when we square that, the genotypic frequency of our white individuals is going to be 0 0.31. 
Now, actually, when I calculated this, it's um, 0 0.3136, but let's go ahead and round. Okay, now let's calculate 2p cubed. So we're going to take 2 times p, which is 0 0.56 times q, which is 0 0.44. Now I'm going to calculate that. Okay, I get 0 0.49. This is the genotypic frequency of our pink individuals. Now, let's calculate our red individuals, which is Q squared. So we're squaring 0 0.44. And I'm getting, um, rounding, I'm going to say that's 0 0.2. Okay, so we have our genotypic frequencies for our white, pink, and red individuals. Now, from here, we're going to assume that these individuals here are going to reproduce. So we're going to have to establish a new starting population. Now, for the natural selection portion of your lab manual, you're always going to start with 40 individuals. So how do we obtain, how do we know how many individuals of what color we're going to have in a new population of 40? So from here, what we're going to do is multiply our genotypic frequency numbers by 40 because the new starting population is going to um, consist of 40 new individuals. So our new number of white individuals will be 40. So I'm multiplying by 40 because that's our new population size. Okay, I get 12.4. All right, now let's calculate our pink individuals in the new population. Okay, I'm getting 19.6, so I'm going to round that to 20. Oh, see, I made a mistake here. 12.4, these are whole individuals, so we can't have a fourth of an individual. So I'm rounding down to 12, but this next one I'm going to round up to 20. And lastly, red is going to equal 0 0.2 times 40. And 
nine, this gives us eight. And notice if we were to add up 12 and eight and 20, we should get 40 individuals for our new population. So our new population is going to be comprised of 12 white individuals, 20 pink individuals, and eight red individuals. So if we notice here, due to natural selection and our white, let's say it's a Arctic background, maybe it's snow, the white individuals are able to escape predation more easily because they blend in with the background. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good rest of your semester.